With the tide in and the sun out, this is a view of a typical British beach. You can listen to the waves crash against the shore, you could sunbathe, you can even go fishing. But wait six hours and the life hidden below these waves is revealed. And what a weirdly wonderful world awaits. Mm. This is Minster Beach on a small island in the middle of the Thames estuary called the Isle of Sheppey. This may just look like a typical British beach with nothing interesting to do until the tide comes in, but there are some absolutely awesome and amazing creatures right here when the tide goes out. Survival on the sandy shore is all about embracing the sand. A species that does this perfectly is the Dahlia anemone. Using the sand to dress itself in a sandy costume, this means it's camouflaged from pesky predators and increases its chance of survival. One of the toughest things about living in a sandy shore environment is that it is constantly changing and there's very little for any species to grab or hold on to. So species have to be, well, a bit more ingenious. This mussel seems to have it sussed and has used its byssus threads to rope together a group of shells for some more stability instead of a typical rock. But these lugwell casts are a reminder that of course, most life on the sandy shore is not visible from the surface and instead decide to live their life in the more stable, deeper sediments rather than at the ever-changing surface. But that doesn't mean you'll never get to see these species because some of them decide to visit the surface every now and again. This is a cockle. Cockles are filter feeding bivalves that spend most of their life in the sediment below. But when it gets fed up of its home, it makes a mammoth march to the surface, leaving behind this very obvious trail. This seems like such a mammoth trek for such a small and well clumsy looking organism. To be able to move, the cockle must utilise its muscular foot, which is much like a tongue. It's expelled into the sand and forms an anchor. When the length of the foot is changed, it moves the cockle enough to make it wiggle and propels the cockle slightly forward. Lots of repetitions of this movement means that the cockle can move a good 30 centimetres in the sand during one tidal cycle. It will then rebury itself to filter feed in the water when the tide comes in. Not all areas of the sandy shore are the same. The tides and the waves will influence certain areas differently and with this, the life that you find there also varies. Some areas become raised and form things called sandbanks. Some feel similar to deserts, vast areas of sand with no obvious life, but others become populated by sandworms. The added stability of the sand provided by these sandworms brings with it the crackling noise of life, if only you stand and listen for a moment. Sandworms can also be found in fast flowing tidal channels, forming an underwater forest of filter feeding. In other places, soft squelchy mud dominates. Where the topography of the sand dips, giant sandy pools can form. Some even become sheltered enough to collect small rocks, creating habitats that look more like a rocky shore. Rocks, large or small, are a welcome refuge for any species on the sandy shore, so you'll find a lot there. Birds have caught onto this too, and are often favourite spots to catch some grub. Seaweeds, which rely on a hard surface to attach and survive, cover the rocks at the top where they can photosynthesize to gain energy. But lift up a rock and an entirely different world can be found. Crustaceans love to hang out at the bottom of rocks like this juvenile porcelain crab. And these juvenile barnacles, I reckon barely over a week old. Next to them, their brothers and sisters in the middle of a feeding frenzy. With any luck, they'll be as big as them next year and breeding too. 
These tubes are filled with worms, which also require a hard surface to live on and can often be found under rocks. If you're lucky enough, you'll even catch a glimpse of the worm poking its head out, which looks something more like you'd see in Star Wars than on a beach. But potentially the closest thing to look like it's straight out of a movie, well, a horror movie if you're an arachnophobe, are these little beauties here, sea spiders. These aren't true spiders, or even arachnids, but they are similar, as they're both arthropods, but these are classed as pycnogonids instead of, well, arachnid spiders. They prowl on the bottom of rocks and on the bottom of the seafloor, hunting for things such as worms and sponges. But don't worry, they're not harmful to humans in any way. In fact, this one was quite friendly. As for many terrestrial and marine species, spring is a time for species to breed and for a new generation of marine creatures to try and survive another year. These green blobs, which are the egg masses of the green leaf worm, can often be seen lying in the sand. Hopefully, this worm had a chance to lay its eggs before becoming food for this shore crab. At this time of year, the sandy shores are a nursery for a number of species, especially those who can master sandy camouflage. Juvenile common shore crabs carapaces camouflage them against the sand so that when the tide goes out they're able to hide from predators such as seabirds or even their own parents. This means you can see some lovely colours and patterns. With such great camouflage, some even decide to scuttle about the sea floor. Well, until they lose that bravery and just decide to hide under the sand instead. With a very beady eye, you can see the zips and darts of hundreds of small fish and shrimp. It's not rare sight to see these specks darting across the water in front of your eyes, but with them being so small and only less than fingernail size, they have perfect camouflage, so it's a rare sight to catch a full glimpse of a fish sitting there willing to let you admire it for a second. Though I have no doubt there are hundreds of eyes on you as you explore the sandy shore that you don't even realise are watching you. Their parents, if they decide to stay on the sand when the tide retreats, are not so subtle. Like juvenile adults, they also have amazing sandy shore camouflage, almost seamlessly blending in with their surroundings. Well, until they start flapping about. Some decide to take a risk and stay here when the tide's out to avoid the much larger underwater predators and hope they are not noticed by any hungry seabirds. This has just been some of the species that you can find when the tide goes out in your local sandy beach. So don't be disappointed the next time you're down the beach and the sea's not there, because really you've just uncovered meters and meters and meters of awesome sandy shore to explore and find the species that have decided to stay lurking there. When the tide retreats.